Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are painting Slain McCroft from Warlord Games 2000 AD, Slain Kiss My Axe. This is the main hero, and boy do I end up hating tartan paint. So I start off with just a white primer, and straight away the biggest part of him is his skin. So I'm using the Army Speed Painter, and we start off with Crusader Flesh, which I am loving this color for flesh tone. It hits all the right spots, sits nicely, just loving how it goes on. It looks like it would be a lot darker when you first put it on, but it actually turns out a lot lighter than you'd expect. And now and again, on a few of my other miniatures, I've just gone back and done multiple coats of this paint to give them slight different shades. But yeah, you can just see it clings to his muscles, his facial features really well. Gets into that hairline, which on this model he has a lot of hair. And it just really helps make the muscle tones pop. So for those who don't know, Slain is a Celtic hero of the 2000 AD comic line, chosen by the Earth Goddess to protect her realms of the young, and mostly the Irish. Uh, at this stage, he has just become a king, I believe, so he has yellow tartan. And you will see later on. God, paint and tartan is a nightmare. I do not recommend. <laughs> but next up was the Grim Black, and this is obviously for his hair. Slain has very striking black hair. He also has a lot of it, even on his... Um, the warped one, which you can see in blurry in the top corner there. He was my test scheme model. Just a massive mop of hair that I'm rather jealous of. And there you go. I did find that it probably went too gray as we're going along in the video. So you will see me touch it up a few more coats just to give him the darker black hair. Then we move on to Zealot Yellow which is what I'm going to use for all the tartan patches. So the main part is obviously his kilt, which is around his waist. And then um, probably has a more technical name, but the sash that goes over his body as well. This yellow is just lovely to paint with. I'm not sure I'd, I'm going to try it out on some space Marines because I've got lamentas that I want to paint, but for this model, it worked perfectly because there's so much texture in his cloth that it just sits nicely into the shadows, yet the flatter areas just pop once it dries. And here we go, we're getting somewhere now. Dark wood, obviously this is going to form the axe handle. This is a really dark brown. Um, I think in the photo I was looking at, they used more of a black color, but I wasn't keen on that. Slain is meant to be the champion of the Earth Goddess, so I feel like he'd use dark wood. I don't know what it would be. Maybe a walnut. I'm going to pretend I actually know my woods, but I have no clue whatsoever. It's a dark wood, everyone. Just get over it. And then there was the fiddly part that his hands are holding. We uh, skip over that and move on to the hardened leather. This will represent the darker leather bits on the model. So I use it for the lower half of his boots. Um, the pouch, I know it has a more fancier name. If you were talking to a Scotsman or an Irishman, but his little pouch that he has at the groin area of his kilt. And I just picked that out. My goal is to actually use a lighter color to do the top of the boot, just to give it some uh, tonal contrast. Also did his arm wrap. Um, in the photo I was looking at, it was metallic. And I don't like metallic, especially on Slane. Um, yeah, 
at this point I had to use some Games Workshop paint. I'm sorry, everyone, but I had to touch up the model. It'd been a few overspills into areas that I didn't want color on. But yeah, quickly cleaned up the model. We can see where we're going now. And here we go, the pallid bone. This is normally used for your skeleton hordes, but I'm using it on the uh, top of the boot just to give it some tonal difference. I imagine he's got like a, a leather boot and the dark tone is the outer leather and the lighter tone is the folded over piece that is like the inner flesh of the creature. I think it just helps add some distinction. And then runic gray, this is my go-to color. Uh, I think it works well for Slain because originally his axe is made of stone. I think this does well to represent a stone color. I use it on his axe head and his uh, wrist guards, band braces, I think they're called. And also on his uh, warrior belt, which is a massive boar figure, which is great. But yeah, I, I like to use this as a replacement for metallics. I'm not a huge fan of sticking silver on. You do this lovely paint job and then you have that weird, I guess I only have GW metallics to discuss, but it leaves almost like a glittery metallic as opposed to a nice metallic. And there's no way that I'm doing non-metallic metals. I can't do it. So this runic gray is perfect for me. You'll see that I've actually used it on a few models in the past to represent metal guns on the sci-fi range of Judge Dredd. It works. I don't think anybody cares when you're three foot away looking down. Having a painted model is a lot more important than having award-winning models, in my opinion. I'd rather see a complete set of figures that are painted to tabletop standard. It's now at this point that I'm looking at my warped one, working out where I put the tattoos on him and what tattoos I need to copy on the slime. I got lucky with my placement, so I only had to do an eye and his shoulder. So for this I use Slaughter Red. And for the eye it's just a straight line down the face, which in this Ottawa heat at the moment, the paint just dries up so fast that, as you can see, I'm struggling to even apply the paint. Took a few goes. Very annoying. And then a few stripes on his arm, like I've done on the Warp Fiend. His tattoos are done. That was super easy. But it just adds a little pop of color. Now we go back to the uh, Grim Black. I need to fix up the dagger blade. I used the gray on it and it didn't really work for me. So I'm going to go over on black. Also take this opportunity to touch up his hair. I've now been using these paints for over three weeks. And a lot of the issues that I saw YouTubers complaining about early on I have not had that issue. I don't know if it's more a case of the tester packs they got weren't finished or if Army Painter did a few tweaks, but yeah, I have not had issues with bleeding as long as I've let them dry enough. Doesn't seem to be an actual issue. I then try my best to do some eyes. I1 goes well, I2, uh, not so well. He looks a bit crazy. I shouldn't have gone back in. That was my first mistake and I had to fix it up. So I disappear for a bit, touch up the flesh, which then gave him a weird look on one side of his face, but ugh. eye is always a problem. And then I try and tackle the tartan. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to paint tartan. I thought the scheme that I saw online looked easy enough. It had 
some thicker black lines that were crossed, and then inside were thinner lines. I tried to duplicate it. I feel at this stage I'm very happy. It looks good in my opinion. Um, I got the crosses going, I got the squares going. I probably should have cut my losses and said, you know what, done. But I don't. I try and get the final lines in, which will happen after this stage. I'm doing a, a very nice voiceover because I find it easier than trying to talk and paint at the same time. And here you go, I'm trying to put those final lines in, but the heat in Ottawa is just messing up the paint. I can only get so much paint on a brush and then I reach a point where I'm like, there's more black than yellow on his kilt now. And I'm a little bit disappointed in the finish. But without going back and completely whiting it out and painting it yellow again, I'm just going to have to love it as it is. Maybe I'll go back at a future date and fix it. But for now, that is his kilt. I then use the holy white. I still haven't worked out this paint yet. It comes out gray. So you'll see I'm using it here actually almost like a shade, which is pretty bad. But it, um, I find it just darkens down some items for him. So I darken down the tusk horns and uh, his fan brace and some trinkets on his pouch at the front. It's pretty much at this point where I'm happy. I go in and just do a little bit of detail work. I add in some gem color. I whiten up the tusk on the ball. That's pretty much it. He is now, as far as I'm concerned, tabletop ready. Is he going to win awards? No. Uh, is he going to look good on a tabletop? Cutting off the heads of Droon Lords and other monsters? Hell yeah. So I hope you like. hope you'll subscribe. Drop me a like. Drop me a follow. I'm like five away from 200. This is amazing. I never expected to hit 200. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my very quick How to Paint Slime. Cheers.